but he's putting granny panties on girls right. when he knows that they're going to get an the, infection. The, he should have known. Let me just say this to you. What? The first night you slept with this man, you didn't even have protection on. Okay? First so, night, wait, wait. If you're not going to go through the trouble of protecting yourself and have unprotected sex with a stranger, I'm not going to protect you either. Hey guys, so I'm going to be making a video discussing something that a lot of people have come forward with in the past couple of weeks. I don't know, ow, Frank, oh my god, you just hit me. A lot of people have come forward in the past couple of weeks, which I don't understand because literally this is something that happened two years ago, maybe even more than that. But apparently it has kind of gained traction on the internet and that is an episode of Justice with Judge Karen D. It's basically like a Judge Judy show. Judge Karen D is this very strong headed, scary, frightening, terrifying African American judge. And it was actually one of the first acting roles I received when I moved to California. So basically I went into a casting for like a TV show. There really weren't any details to what kind of show it would be. It was like a cattle call type casting where they just brought in a bunch of people. And what they did is they gave us numbers and when they called your number you had to go and stand up in front of like a panel of people and they gave you a scenario and you guys had to improvise and I was wondering like what the fuck kind of show is this is this like Saturday Night Live because I am so down for that well it turns out they really really liked me I could tell that they responded really well to my audition because everybody was laughing even the panel of judges or casting directors or whatever the fuck they were they were laughing as well so I was very very proud of myself I was like damn I really nailed that like if they they don't call me back then shit I'm moving to Arkansas and as luck would have it a couple hours later they actually did end up calling me back and they said we would like you to be on the show and I was like okay great what show is this and that's when they told me that it was like a Judge Judy type show so then I was like okay well I guess I will not be practicing my Academy Award acceptance speech tonight then it was definitely not the kind of show that I was imagining for my first ever on-screen role living in Los Angeles but I was like okay you know what I'm gonna take it everybody's got to start somewhere and at least I'm not an extra. At least I'm like the main person in the show. So I was very confused at first because I had watched Judge Judy my entire childhood. Whenever I used to fake sick from school, I would watch Jerry Springer and Maury. And I loved all these shows, but I was really confused because... I didn't have any kind of lawsuit happening and I wasn't sure how they were going to do this. So the day of the actual show came and I drove down to the studio. They put me in hair and makeup and then they introduced me to two other people who were going to be my lawsuit buddies and they gave us a piece of paper and they had somebody come in the room with us they basically went through all of the details of the entire lawsuit we would have these fake names that we'd be using we had this fake scenario that we had to discuss for like two hours we just sat in this tiny empty room they gave us snacks and all of it was improv there were no lines but the reason why they wanted us to practice for two hours is because they wanted to make sure that we were all kind of on the same page that we had the same details that we all knew each other's names, that we would have specific information that we could bounce off of each other with and that way that would make it look much more realistic and believable. And so finally the time came to go and perform this skit, I guess you could call it, in front of an entire live studio audience which was really crazy. Like they literally just like pushed you into the studio and they're like, okay, have fun. Clarissa Vaughn is suing ex-boyfriend Peter Grasso in the amount of $1,032. She says she required medical treatment after wearing a pair of underwear suggested by the defendant. Um, we met back in January at uh -huh. the gym, our local gym that we were going to, uh -huh. and we never really talked at the gym, but... Okay. You used to see him at the gym all the time? Yeah, like I would like look at him and like wink at him and he'd smile at me and we are just like really flirtatious. Okay. But you know... He never came over and said, hey, my name is Peter. Um, he, he did, he like, he did come over to me and introduce himself, kind of. Uh-huh. But What's he never... kind of? How do you kind of introduce yourself? Um, like, he didn't, like, shake my hand or, like, right. give me his number or anything. Well, what kinda... did he say? He was like, hey, you look good today. Stuff like that. <laughs> okay, deep stuff, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, then one night, I was with my girlfriend, we were drinking a little bit of wine, and... It was kind of a stupid idea, but we just thought it'd be fun to just post on misconnections on the internet. So what did you do? You put something on there yourself? Yeah, I did. I was like, you know, I'm the cute girl from the gym. Right, yeah, that could have been anybody. Oh, yeah. But, like, he would know which one. I said I was, like, the blonde one with the nice, um, 
eyes. Okay. Be crazy, be wild, but be believable. I decided that the character that I was going to go with for this particular girl that I was playing was the dissy dumb blonde, which I thought would be very believable because someone would have to literally actually be fucking stupid to get themselves into the position that this girl got herself into. I am willing to sacrifice my dignity in order to get laughs out of people, in order to entertain people. That's just how I've been my entire life. Like in school, I was always the class clown that would do stupid shit and get in trouble, but as long as I got a laugh out of people, I was like, okay, good. So as soon as I started doing the skit, I noticed that everybody was really laughing and that, yeah, maybe they were laughing at me, but I was making them laugh nonetheless. The entire scenario was really, really ridiculous. I knew that going into it. I was a little worried that this role might make it harder for people to take me seriously, but then again, I really don't care too much about being taken seriously. I mean, as long as I take myself seriously, it's all good. And you know, my grandma don't have cable, so she's not gonna watch this, so it's okay. So everything went really, really well. The producers of the show were like, you were awesome, you were amazing. They said that they even have some other shows that they're working on that they would love me to be a part of. They never called me, by the way. I remember you. And the episode aired like six months later. And when I saw it, I thought it was great. I mean, uh, I rocked it. Hair on fleek, makeup on fleek, outfit fucking perfect for the character. And I thought that maybe some people would see it, but nobody would really connect the dots and like figure out that it's me because I was using an alias in the episode. Then this episode was posted on YouTube pretty recently and people have been messaging me asking, is this you? This girl looks just like you. And yup, that's me. And lo and behold, if you go into the comments section of this video, people are like, that's Stepanka. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is absolutely hilarious. And basically I just wanted to make this video to tell you guys about my experience doing this show and would I do something like this again? Absolutely, it was so much fun. Like I actually kind of want to do an episode of Jerry Springer. That's always been my dream. I love improv. I took so many improv classes throughout my life and I think I'm really, really good at it. I can think of things very, very quickly. And I think that's why I'm pretty good at YouTube as well because I pretty much just turn on a camera and start talking to you guys. Now, do I agree with Judge Karen's verdict? And do I agree with the way that she handled the entire situation? Absolutely not. I don't even know if she's a real judge, to be honest. Maybe she is, I don't know. But I think that the way that she slandered me and the other girl that was on the show with me, I thought that was really, really messed up. She said that there is a word in every language for girls like you. I think that was a little bit insulting and she could have definitely gone about it a much more respectful way. Uh, do I agree with the verdict? Um, honestly, I can't even I, it's just such a weird situation Like I think both of these characters the plaintiff and the defendant They're just so fucking stupid that I believe that they need to be like removed from society and put onto like two separate islands to make sure that none of them ever like procreate or anything like that that should have been the judge's verdict. But yeah, so that is all about my experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comment section what you thought of the episode. Did you think that I did a good job? Did you like my character? Did you identify with my character? Because <laughs> I sure as hell didn't. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>